It's Wednesday, July 20th, 2022, your day with the podcast being brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the Cowboy State. Cowboy State Daily, sign up for their daily newsletter and check them out on their Facebook page. Well, as we head to the second half of the week, we're going to have drier air in the north. So Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, the Pacific Northwest, the air is really dry. But there still will be moisture bottled up in Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. That will lead to thunderstorms in the southern areas. Temperatures are going to be very warm through Friday. We're not going to see the extreme heat that we had earlier in the week. But by anybody's standards, it's going to be very warm to hot. Subtle but important changes are coming this weekend and next week. These are some pretty significant changes. It may not look like much to you on a weather map, but these are subtle little changes that I think will change the dynamic with the way the weather's been over the last several weeks across the lower 48 states, and we'll talk about that. The monsoon moisture creeps back to the north beginning Friday, but it's really the weekend and into early next week when the monsoon comes back into Wyoming, western Nebraska, parts of South Dakota, and a little bit further north while staying in the southwestern United States as well. Also, we do have a La Nina update. The new long-range modeling for La Nina did come in yesterday, and we'll show that to you. Satellite photo really shows the contrast between the dry air here in the northern Rockies and the northern plains and the Pacific Northwest and the deeper subtropical moisture that is just into southern Wyoming, that's mainly high level subtropical moisture, but the deeper low level moisture is down here. Look at this swirl of clouds right here in Mexico, into southwestern areas of Arizona and Southern California. This is a, just a really big pocket of really moist, unstable air. A lot of thunderstorm activity in Northwest Mexico last night. And this is part of the plume of moisture. It's going to take a long ride, but it's eventually going to come up here and then start to come back here over the weekend and into early next week. Right now, it's being suppressed into this area right here, but they are getting some showers and thunderstorms here, which, which they need. That's good. But the dry air really making a big difference coming on in from those northern areas. Now, I wanted to show you, now this is Mexico right here. The uh, precipitation, the thunderstorms that I showed you right there in the deeper subtropical moisture, see these green, yellow, and orange areas right here? These are upper level weather disturbances rotating around the high. And even though they're all the way down here in Mexico, these will sort of maintain themselves as they make the trip north and east later on this weekend and into early next week. Just to show you where you got to pay attention to where your weather's coming from, and this is where the weather comes from by this weekend and early next week. Today, the high is centered right over western New Mexico, so that clockwise flow bottling up that subtropical moisture right there. But you're going to see this weather map I'm showing you here change quite a bit in the coming days. This shows you the dry air, the precipitable water forecast for this afternoon shows the delineation between the warm, moist air down here and the cooler, drier air that's up into the northern areas. As we get into Friday, so this is today, this is Friday. Notice there's a punch late Friday into Saturday morning of that subtropical moisture getting further up into southern and southwest and central areas of Wyoming. And then as we get into Saturday, so this is today, whoops, let me back up here. This is today, this is Friday, this is Saturday. See it getting deeper, see the blues coming on into Wyoming and parts of Colorado there. And then as we get into Sunday, that monsoon moisture axis is cutting right across the area again. So this is a telltale sign that Saturday and especially Sunday, a big uptick in thunderstorm activity for especially southern and southeastern Wyoming. Hey, it's the start of frontier days, right? But that moisture also gets a little bit further north into Montana. And then Here's that ring of fire stretching into the Corn Belt where the thunderstorms are going to be developing while the high is going to temporarily be there. But look what happens. This is the subtle changes I was talking about. By Tuesday, this is by next Tuesday, we have the high pressure pattern kind of splitting in the two areas of high pressure. A high pressure ridge in the eastern Pacific. And we talk about this in the winter a lot. When there's a ridge here, we go into the fridge. Now, I'm not talking about a real big drop in temperature, but when you get a ridge in the eastern Pacific, it redirects the jet stream. So we end up with a trough over south central Canada 
and the ridge moves out of the Southern Plains to the Carolinas. This is a completely different scenario than we have seen in a long time, many weeks, really. So this is a change as we get into the last days of July and into early August. Couple of things happen, and this is gonna be important, especially for areas east of the Continental Divide in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Western Nebraska, the Western Dakotas, and even into Western Kansas and Eastern Colorado, is you have two things going on. The clockwise flow around this big high in the Southern Plains is still gonna keep the door open to the subtropical moisture. However, the cooler air coming in from the Northwest is gonna bring some cooler air along and east of the divide mainly, probably not getting very far west of the divide. And what happens is you end up getting a boundary of cooler moist air that's backed up against the front range. Winds aloft are coming in from the Northwest while surface winds come at opposing angles. And, and basically what this does is this sets the stage up for an active afternoon and evening thunderstorm pattern along and east of the Continental Divide at times, not every day, but at times next week. This is also gonna drive cooler air into the central part of the United States. Now there's gonna be a battle between that southern flow here and that northerly flow here. So there's gonna be some cooler weather coming. Now this is by next Thursday. By next Thursday, the highs are more anchored along the Pacific Northwest coast, the Southeastern United States. There's your jet stream taking that dip. So there's gonna be some cooler air invading. Look at this. These are the temperature anomalies by next Thursday. So you can see the dividing line between the heat there in the Southern Plains and the cooler air coming into the Northern Plains and the Northern Rockies. Wow, with the high pressure building in, we're gonna get some hot weather in California and in the Pacific Northwest here. There are gonna be some hot, dry weather for the packed Northwest next week in this pattern while the central United States cools off. This is kind of opposite the way it's been. It's been cooler than normal here, cooler than normal here, and really hot in the nation's midsection. So there's a, a subtle but significant change that's gonna alter the dynamics of the forecast. So some parts of the middle part of the US, parts of the areas east of the divide are gonna get some relief from the heat next week. And to bolster my point, what I'm showing you here is the surface pressure forecast. Basically, this would be your barometric pressures that you have at home with a home barometer or whatever. This is by noon Wednesday. And what this is showing is a high pressure associated with the cooler air up in Southern Canada. Now these are surface pressure systems. This is gonna bring an upslope pattern counterclockwise around that low. See that low in Utah? So what this is gonna do is feed upslope conditions east of the Continental Divide. That does a couple of things. That cools off areas east of the divide, that brings in moisture, daytime heating, boom, you're gonna get thunderstorm activity. So that's something that we're gonna monitor because it could be an active period and you're gonna get severe weather in this type of situation as well. So I'm talking about something that's pretty far from now, but there are changes afoot looking ahead. And here's that subtropical moisture. This is next Wednesday. In the Intermountain West, we have an axis of subtropical moisture. At the same time, there's that boundary, the upslope conditions, the winds aloft coming in from the Northwest. That's a recipe for active thunderstorm activity next week. A quick La Nina update. Here are the latest sea surface temperature anomalies as of Sunday afternoon. And you can see the La Nina area right here continues, although there's weakening right along the equator here, which is normal for this time of year, but still a lot of cold water. Now, yesterday, we did get an update on all of the modeling predictions. There's a bunch of models here. You see them all lined up. You have a lot of different scenarios. We have one model that actually shows an El Nino forming by December and January. That's, that's wrong. You also have another model that shows a strong La Nina in March, April, and May. That's wrong. So you tend to see where they're clustering. And if you were to take a look, we're basically still expecting into the fall, October, November, December, then November, December, January, by late fall and early winter, we're starting to see La Nina fade. And so this is something that we continue to see on the modeling. That green line here is what we call the dynamic model average, basically the modeling average of all the squiggly lines you see here. 
So basically, we're into neutral status, probably around January, and it does look as though the La Nina's days are numbered, but not quite yet, hanging around for a little longer. Have yourself a great Wednesday. See you tomorrow.